Okay, well, now I'd like to show you how to do canvas transfers of um, paper prints. Uh, what we're doing here, uh, with, this is a, a regular poster that we've got. You'll see that um, part of the border is still left on. We do need to trim off the border um, so that it makes it look more like an oil painting effect rather than a poster that's been stuck down onto canvas. Um, and for a special effect, what we're doing here, we're using one of the, the rotor trim um, craft cutters just to give it a deckled edge going across the edge, uh, which will look nice on the finished stretched item. So we're going to use the big purple ruler, bring it in a, a few millimeters from the, the edge of the print. With this, the idea of the, uh, the, uh, the cutter is that it comes with various different wheels that will give you different jagged edges. So um, we've got it set up, holding it nice and firm. You can see here, just cut through that again. It's given us a nice deckled edge. Okay, so that will show up nicely when we actually stretch it around the wooden stretcher frame. So the next thing that we need to do is to laminate the surface of the print. You'll notice that we're not mounting it down onto a board. This is just an unmounted print, an unmounted paper print. We've got here, this is our heat seal film. This is a product called Satin Matte or Matex heat seal film. And you'll notice that we've got it about four inches, around about 10 centimeters larger than the print. The idea for this is this actually, the, this, the heat seal film and the canvas will get stretched around the back of the, the wooden stretcher frame and hold everything in place. So the first thing that we do, we'll flip it over, we'll fold back about five inches of the release liner. Okay, we'll put a, a crease in that release liner. Okay, we can take our print, tack cloth, clean the print down. Again, be careful when you're using a tack cloth, make sure that you're using it on the right type of images um, and it's not going to damage the print at all. So that's nice and clean. We can then take the heat seal film, position it. You'll notice that the actual heat seal film has got the release liner underneath has got a grid on there. So that helps us line up where we need it to be. So we can smooth out the leading edge of the heat seal film, roll up the heat seal film, give the print another quick wipe down underneath. And then if you pull the release paper from underneath, just a smooth action. What we're not looking to do is to take it all the way off. We just want to stop at the bottom of the print. Okay, and if you just push, press your finger onto the heat seal film, you'll notice that the heat from my finger actually bonds the, the heat seal film onto the surface of the print. We can then flip it back up. If there is any creases, we can actually we can take the remove the release liner away at this stage. Oh, sorry, the heat seal film away at this stage and smooth it back out so it's nice and smooth. The idea for the release paper to stay underneath is because that we've got quite a large border of heat seal film, not so bad now uh, when there's no heat on the product at all, but when it comes out of the press, the likelihood is that this heat seal film will want to fold back over on itself. It's just going to be easier making a little envelope like this. So this is ready to go into the press. Just quickly in the press, you'll notice that we've flipped everything over, so the foam is now on the top and the silicon release film is now on the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll just roll that out of the way. We can take our print, lift that up, pop that onto the silicon release on the, on the base of the press. The foam can come over and cover everything. We can close the lid down, put the latches on, and we'll press the start button. You'll notice that we've got this time, we've got it set at 5 minutes and 20 seconds. Again, the 20 seconds is there to allow for the machine time for, for it to pull vacuum. The five minutes is the length of time the heat seal film uh, takes to use. Now this is a uh, this is a satin matte heat seal film, and it's 50 micron thick. Um, basically, the rule of thumb for every 10 microns of thickness of film, uh, it will be one minute in the press at 90 degrees or 195 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's a 50 micron thick film, it'll be approximately five minutes. Okay, we've now taken the the laminated deckled edged 
print out of the vacuum press. Uh, you'll notice that the, the surface has been laminated, all the holes have been resealed. You will hear in the background the vacuum pump still going. I've actually um, processed in, the, in exactly the same way that we've done with this paper print, but it's a photographic print that's now in the, in the machine. Um, again, lamin just laminating the surface of the print, and we've got a two inch border that's going all the way around. Um, Canvas transfers, um, which is what we're doing here, um, paper prints and photographic prints are um, processed at the start in exactly the same way, so they're both heat sealed, but this is where the process slightly changes. So we've got one heat sealing in the press. We're going to show you how to do this one first. We're going to start this one off. So we turn it over, and you'll notice that we need to take off the silicon release paper that's on the back of the print. Okay. Fingernails are obviously quite good at, in this scenario. Okay, so we just remove the silicon back into the paper. We can discard that. Now, while the picture is still face down, what we want to do, the idea here is that this is actually going to go into a bath of water, which is the, uh, the bath of water that we've got sat in front of us. The idea is that the actual water soaks into the print um, and we're going to do almost like an image transfer. So we're going to take, uh, we're going to remove the heat seal film or the heat set laminate off the surface of the print. That's going to take basically the, t the top surface layer of the print away with it. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to very lightly pierce the back of the print so that water will migrate and absorb into the fibers of the paper very quickly. So again, using the piercing tool, but very, very lightly. We're not going to put any pressure on this at all. I'm basically just going to allow the piercing tool just to go over the surface of the paper. We're just going to really give it a good piercing over, over the back there. Okay. As long as you're not putting any pressure on there, nothing is going to start showing through at the front. Okay, so that's nicely pierced. It's got all little holes in the back. What we're going to do is put this into the the tray and allow it to soak in. Okay. Just pop up, push that down. And you'll notice straight away that the water is flooding into those holes. And if you pierced it well enough, that's probably going to take around about five or ten minutes in the water. Okay, we'll go over onto the photographic print while that's soaking.